Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly on the Spectrum Arms Flex SMG. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting, subscribing because those interactions will help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms, help the channel grow. You want to stop by my socials, they're all on my link tree link down below in the description. Come by and say hello, especially on my Discord, it's pretty damn friendly in there. Uh, and if you want to support the channel a little bit more, the join button down below uh, will take you to channel memberships. 99 pence a month, custom giveaways, a little bit of a say in the channel's running, that kind of thing, uh, and, and bloopers as well. Totally optional, really appreciate it. So following on from the unboxing of this little bad boy, we're going to have a look at the disassembly of this. Now, um, we'll get straight into it and, and, and not miss about. I did look briefly, that is a 14mm negative thread that we'll just remove off there. And that will allow you to change and put on whatever you want on the front. In terms of the handguard then, there is just three um, hex head bolts there or allen key bolts there that front end will just slide off I'm going to leave it on just because it's more hassle than it's worth in fact you know what let's have a quick for the the morbid curiosity me is getting the better of me now I know I've said it's hex head but I typically use Torx because I find that they grip better uh, because I know that there's bolts in the, the nuts are in the other side I'm just going to put my fingers underneath to catch them whilst I'm doing that now I have had a comment from somebody before well i say comment i've had a direct message from somebody before saying you look kind of goofy doing this you know you, you look kind of clumsy and i am clumsy i am naturally clumsy but what i will say is the majority of this disassembly i'm doing with this floating in the air now that is not a very easy thing to do and and still do achieve some of this so obviously keep that in mind that you know i'm doing this to help the community and not to demonstrate anything else um the other thing as well is some people are like, oh, you're not even using some of the right tools. What I'm trying to do is show you that a normal set of screwdrivers can be used to achieve most things. And it's rare that you need something special. So I don't know if you can hear that. That is a bag of BBs has just turned home, open in the other room and literally just spilled all over the floor. Bloody hell. Um, so <laughs> the handguard, back to it. Remove the screws. That now just wiggles off. And there is your uh, barrel nut that holds the barrel on. It is a two piece, so if you undo this little screw, you'll be able to remove this outer barrel to change the outer barrel uh, if it gets damaged or broken, that kind of thing. So obviously all of this is for the purposes of repair and maintenance, and I'll put those screws back in shortly. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the stock. I'm just gonna pull this little tab here, and that releases the stock. I'm going to pull out the power cable. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna release the um, front body pin here to take the upper receiver off now i'm hoping i can use this i did forget to comment that that was a t10 a torx 10 that i used to remove those hex head bolts i typically find you tend to not get the round in if you use a hot uh, a, a torx head instead of an allen key or hex head bolt so just remove that t10 screw as well now that doesn't seem to want to come out so i've just put my screwdriver in and being very careful to not damage the threads what i could have done is put like a thin screwdriver down there that doesn't access the threads and just knock it out like that, like a punch. There is our thick chunky bolt. That's come out of the way, I'm just putting that to one side. Now you know it's the front pin bolt because it's got a D shape to it, which sits in line with that. So put that out of the way and that upper, helps if I don't pull on that. I'm just gonna pull, there we go. Pull the charging handle because there is a little notch there that the charging handle kind of sticks on and we'll separate that out. So there is our blue hop and barrel assembly, little spring on top. I'll just turn the hop fully on. Now it did take an awful lot of turning to get it to hop two fires and that's the hop fully on, but it is spotlessly clean down there, which is good, reassuring. Probably will hop slightly higher, but just obviously something to be aware of. Drop that back in there. That's good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get, hmm, let's see, hopefully this Phillips head screwdriver is long enough. It is. I don't need to go and get my long one. And I'm just going to undo the Phillips head in there. I can see that's getting loose. Listening for the click. I'm just going to tip that up and jiggle it about. And it should, I don't know. There's the screw. 
So a long screw with a little wash on it. And there is the retaining silver clip is there, which I'm just going to use this to poke it out. It's not actually coming. Probably can get it out, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to pull the wiring through if I can. What I've done is, for now, I've just pulled the wiring through the other side. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to push that out because it needs to come out, really. There we go. It is quite well wedged in there, actually. You can see it just coming to the end now. There we go. So there is it. When it's set in there, the screw goes in like that and goes in that way, which we'll discuss when we're assembling. So I can now easily take that off. The back plate is well wedged onto the back there. That's a good snug fit, that. I like that. So that comes off and it sits that orientation. There is a a lift uh, extruded out part and an indented the indented should be what's looking at you like that next thing i do is oh, it's one of those pistol grips yeah. i'm not overly keen on these because i found i've seen on some these tabs have either broken or just worked loose and popped out and people's basically that's happened that's come out and and, and things have just not been working properly um until somebody's discovered that so just keep an eye on the bottom of it so the red wire came up the back there loops round to the front I'm just going to lift the black wire off which also comes up the back and on the black terminal at the back i'm just going to pull that out so there is our standard specnet advanced motor and the spring fell off the um the armature off the top there we have got well that's quite nice there are four separate phillips heads in this one uh, in each of the four corners so i'm just going to remove those now i don't know you can see one of the screws i've lifted out but the other three screws are in there so you've got one two three four and then you've got three holes across the middle that are for the the red wire the motor and the black wire to come up through so I'll just get that out of the way so next thing i've got a trigger pin here and i've got the rear body pin so i'll push i'm guessing that way by the looks of it so what i'm looking for is and there they are the teeth on this pin on the right hand side there so i've just pulled that body pin out put that out of the way and then we've just got this rear body pin in so i'm just going to push that in use it like there we go that just pushed out there are teeth on that so it came out from the right hand side uh, just to help it retain and then we should in my last words oh wait one of those so this cutoff is hooked in underneath the gearbox so i'm just manipulating it around and i have just noticed it is a quick change gearbox as well i'll show you how to reinsert that uh, when we're doing reassembly i'm going to pull that up and out now i could have accessed that spring down the stock tube i could have taken out that plate although it was wedged in there so it probably wouldn't have been that easy uh, but this is pushing quarter turn anti-clockwise and out it comes so it is a blue plastic metal ended spring guide and there is our spring it's just a standard linear spring nothing special there We've got a blue um, selector plate, which they've gone for. It is an M41, but they've got like a notch. It's, that's usually wider, and the disc on the back of here sits a little bit deep. And what they've done is they've put a notch on there that interacts with this to slide it into position. So make sure when you put it back in, you try and line up this with the notch to avoid issues. So I'll flip that over. We've got metal bushings in there, quite big metal bushings in there. We've got a cylinder, uh, silver cylinder. We've got a blue plastic piston. It looks very similar to a, a seam one. So I'm going to get a screwdriver. We'll get this open and go. So Phillips head again. 
So the screws along the top are all the same. So keep them together. I need, this is not the right Phillips head. I'm going to round something if I'm not careful. What I've done is I've switched to a PH2 Phillips head 2 because that is a better fit for these screws which has a more secure fit so I'm not going to damage anything uh, on the screw head. And then going along the bottom, let's have a look. I'm guessing because they're all same head type it's all going to be the same screw but we'll see we'll keep them all in the right order so we know that's two identical so far All of them are identical by the looks of it, unless I'm proved a liar by this one last screw. I hope I'm not made a liar. There we go, last screw, all the same. So I'm just going to hold this down, this assembly down with my finger, and pull the back of the gearbox up, listening for the pop. So there we've got a fairly standard shim just popped off there. So just put that back on the top of the set to gear. So we've got a fairly standard looking gear set. Pull that back and in the piston goes. So we've got our blue trigger block. We've got our blue tappet plate with return spring, a blue nozzle on the front there. So what I'm going to do is the gear set looks all right. The trigger is, it's just a standard version two uh, gearbox basically. So I'm just going to lift this assembly up to check the uh, air compression. I've just lifted all those shims off. So what I'm looking for here is that I can put my finger over there and I'm looking for the quality of air seal that this rubber o-ring makes inside this cylinder to make sure I've got good air compression and already I can feel that so I'm just trapping the air in there and I'm just going to see how far I can push that and straight away there is pressure straight away now it's vented because the barrel is only short so you don't want full um a full unvented cylinder because you can over pressurize and that kind of thing uh, and can cause issues it is a fully metal toothpiece, and if I didn't know any better, I'd almost say this was SEMA built, but um, pretty pretty damn good. And the first tooth in after the back tooth is uh, cut down to help with engagement. So the air seal is damn good. Let's put the air nozzle on then. So this pushes the BB forward. I'm not expecting... It's still pretty good. I can still push the piston in, but I can feel that there is a lot of pressure there. So there is good air seal, at least in the gearbox element. Uh, and the spring didn't feel overly strong, which would probably explain why it's only about 300 FPS. So I'm gonna rebuild this now uh, and, and we'll sort of talk through this a little bit. So this spring here on the tappet plate pulls it back once it's been pulled back by the uh, sector gear. So I'm just gonna hook it onto this peg here at the front. And then awkwardly, whilst also doing this, I'm going to then pull back against that spring and try and drop, there we go, the cylinder into place. I'm then going to twist. So what I've done is this cylinder head has got a lug on the other side and there's a notch like that, like that one underneath and that locates it onto that and it should sit flush, don't tip it too far, it should sit flush along the edge of the gearbox there. Um, which I'll show you, hopefully, if I remember. This spring, I'm going to push it right down the peg because it helps keep it pushed down. Now, I have noticed that these have jumped off. These shims are little metal washers that basically help to... There we go. There we go. They help to position the gears against each other within the gearbox to stop because what we don't want is that these gears are moving too much sort of side to side on their on their um, ax axles axis whatever um because if they do it can create additional sound scratchy sound so if you've adjusted your motor and it doesn't sound very good still it could be that your shimming is not very good if you are running a, an ag like this and you find that um 
your motor is getting hot and there's not a MOSFET in it, then it might be that your shimming is too tight and there's too many shims in and it's creating friction that's not good. So what I did to close the gearbox is I put the front lug down and then I rolled, sort of rolled it backwards and I'm just going to use a thin screwdriver just to position or pull things into position to locate it until use that to move that there we go it clicks shut now what i'm looking for is i shouldn't have to force it shut it should just nicely sit flush back together the, the cylinder you can see there is flush with the the sides of the gearbox which is good we have got a bit of radius in there going off which is nice to stop the corners of the cylinder pushing on the gearbox and reinforcement there so it's less likely to break that's in a good position so we can bring the screws back in then and screw this all back together so as i was saying about shimming if it's not shimmed properly too loose and you can generate extra noise it just sounds scratchy and not very good too tight and it can generate friction or does generate friction and the gearbox is not very smooth um, and it basically it's making the motor work harder which generates heat along your electrics um, it's not the only reason if you have got a MOSFET and there's active braking on that MOSFET um, what happens is the MOS the MOSFET uses the motor to stop the gearbox turning now that effort, unless it's a brush, brushless motor, which are expensive, um, generates significant amounts of heat. So a lot of people get an active braking MOSFET installed and then complain that suddenly, after spamming, particularly spamming single shot a lot, that their, their motors suddenly got very warm. That is to be expected because um, spamming single shot is obviously a lot of stopping and starting the gearbox. It will generate a significant amount of heat. Now brushless motors tend to not have that issue and do not generate the kind of heat that uh, brushed traditional airsoft motors do but they are obviously significantly expensive um, so what you can do is if there is adjustable um, active braking what you can do is adjust it to just the lowest enough level that it still stops the gearbox turning so often um, on 11.1s this I did forget to comment in the unboxing um, on an 11.1 double shoots that will be stopped by an, uh, an active braking MOSFET. Um, so it basically stops that happening effectively. Um, so you turn it down, you can turn it down. Some MOSFETs like the Gate Titan have adaptive uh, and, and it sort of learns how much it needs to stop. Uh, so it might be warm initially until it's learnt, but then basically eventually it will be all good. So I'm just going to fed the um, spring back in there and I'm making a mincemeat of this there we go so push the spring back in push the spring bag guide back in with the pegs match and then it's a quarter turn so that the pegs are across the back there and it should sit basically flush with the back of the gearbox so we're now going to feed this back into the receiver so the wiring comes out the back there and we feed the wiring in there now what i'm going to do is while we're doing this we're going to drop this little lever back in this is our bolt release now you can see it sits in there and it hooks into a little assembly on the other side there so it's just a case of whilst to be fair most of the way the gearbox is most of the way in if not all of the way in i might need to if i drop it in so what i've done is i've dropped it in I'm just going to drop this in through here so it sits inside now you possibly can't see i don't think the camera will pick it up properly but i'm just positioning it into the little hole that it needs to latch into on the other side which is a bit of a faff okay. Now the, the hole is actually quite low. I was aiming quite high, but it's actually quite low. Perhaps if I've got like a, you might need a bit of a flashlight to just shine in. What I'm doing is just trying to maneuver it into that and it should just drop in and sit low. That is quite a faff to get back into place. Maybe down. Yeah.
Right, it was an absolute nightmare to get it back in, but I'm pretty sure I've got it in there now. Pretty sure, 99% sure, could be wrong. It is a pain, there is a basically, in this side there is a hole that it sits into basically, and I can see that it is pulling down on that latch, which is good. So I should be able to now secure this back in. So I'm gonna bring the rear body pen in, which is the one on the teeth in its circle. It comes in from this side. So I'm just gonna tap that in. Obviously don't forget this is a polymer body, so just be a little bit more delicate with it if you're tapping things in and out. I'm gonna bring the trigger uh, pin back in, which again, checking that I've got the selector lined up. Yeah, that's lined up and it's moving fine. The teeth need to be on this right hand side. I did check that I could see straight through the hole that there wasn't anything in the way, which would mean that I've disassembled it incorrectly or reassembled it incorrectly. So that's in uh, so far. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this up here and we're gonna bring in the uh, stock. In fact, we'll do the... No, we'll do the pistol now, the pistol grip. So those are both on. So I'm gonna bring the pistol grip back in. Again, three of the screws are in. Now the very front hole, the red wire is gonna go into, like that. The very back hole, the black wire is gonna go into, and I'm gonna feed them in. And then I'm gonna bring in my screwdriver. Now, when you start screwing in, make sure that you go backwards until you get the click. So you know that you're in the threads properly, otherwise you run the risk of damaging threads. Oops. There we go, tighten that down. Number three. Number three, check number one again. There we go. Just making sure that I've not crushed the wires under the pistol grip, that they are both come directly into the pistol grip and not trapped. And then number four in. Now, the red wire comes in at the front, it comes along this side, and then it's gonna come up the back. So I'm just gonna push that wire sort of out of the way a little bit. And then I'm gonna drop the motor in. Now what I need to do is check that the red, and there goes the spring. Okay, crawling around on the floors, found the, uh, the little spring off the motor. So, let's try that again, shall we? I'm gonna put in the red cont contact at the front. I'm gonna keep the red wire Sort of like that. I'm gonna go in like that so I don't lose that spring. And it should, there we go. Now it should drop in pretty easy. And it should spring about, which it is. And what I'm looking for here is then that the red wire is coming up here. The black wire is coming up this side and the black wire, I'm gonna just push the motor down a little bit and push the black terminal on. This is quite fiddly to do, especially while trying to float it in the air. If you are struggling, it can be helpful to get some needle nose pliers to help you just grab the uh, the. the connector and push it on. There we go, got the black terminal on. So the red one then is just going to come around on the side like that. And then clicks on like that and then this terminal has a fit this uh, part has a thing that goes down there this screw here needs to sit on top of there so I'm just going to push it in and make, make sure that plastic structure 
is bouncing still, which it is, and then the pistol grip is just going to drop down, and those little pits need to push in and out. And there we go. That big screw in there will adjust, adjust your motor. So we've now got the pistol grip on. We're going to push the wiring up like that, and we're going to bring this in again. We've got the protruding part is going to go into the body like that. Now it was a snug fit. There we go. So that's on nice. I'm going to push the wiring down the stock tube. And that's going to go on there. It's a traditional style AR stock tube. I'm going to drop this down into there. What I might need to do is just drive it in. Just because it's a snug fit. But what I'm looking to do is because it's a D-shape with a, a flat part. I'm looking to get that flat part sort of squared across. Um, the bottom of that there. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver just to try and manipulate it around a little bit. There we go, that's enough. I'm just going to, there we go, I'm looking for that click. I was screwing backwards basically, sounding out that click. So I know that I'm in the threads. Oh, there we go, it's dropped further. There we go, now I'm in the threads. There we go, tightening it down. Now at this point, just to make sure things are right, I should be able to see that that spring guide is still straight, and it is, which means that the screw's holding it straight, which is exactly what we want. We can put the power connector back in there. We can put the stock back on. And then pull those two tabs down from either side. On goes the stock. I'm gonna bring the upper receiver back in. Now it might be that that catches on there, so I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. I need to pull the charging handle back and up a little bit and it just nicely clicks in together. The D shape goes into there, because it's obviously shaped to match. I'm gonna bring in the front screw. Just get that lined up, there we go. I need the Torx 10. Tighten that down. There we go. Next thing, I'm going to bring these screws back in. I'm making sure that this is pushed back. The bolts are all, it's all shaped specifically for the bolts to just go in one side. So what I'm just going to do to save a little bit of time, I've dropped all three in the right position. I'm going to hold them in position with my fingers. I'm going to drop the screws in from the other side. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room there. I'm just going to keep it lined up as best I can until I've tightened it down. That's one. Again, don't forget it is polymer, so do not over tighten it. Because you're going to, it doesn't mean leave it loose, but you know, I'm just getting them initially tight. One. Two. Three. Solid, and there we go. Fully built and reassembled. I hope that helps you with your repairs and maintenance in the future. Hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it immensely. It's nice to see the quick change spring system in there to make repairs and maintenance quicker and easier. Uh, please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.